So, uh, season one wrapped up technically with Stephen Baum, uh, mm-hmm. and we haven't talked about Stephen Baum in in detail on this show. So I guess that's where we should start. Let, let's start going into that because, like, it, it's with Stephen Baum that uh, Steven Universe blew up with a bunch of people yeah, who hadn't considered it, it before. It worked. It was pretty crazy. Like Stephen Baum was literally an explosion. Everybody yeah. was all of a sudden. Everyone was talking about the show and like, "Oh my god, the show is so amazing!" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know." Like the day, so, like the yeah. d- the day like, after no, the day after Jailbreak, like half the people I knew uh, who didn't watch Steven Universe were marathoning it. Yeah, yeah. It, it really kind of brought the show to everybody's attention. I think they knocked uh, it out of the um, park. It was of, a really good idea for them to have done it, it that was, way. It was it was really good. I think that a lot of people had sort of been like, "Yeah, it looks kind of cute, but I don't think it's going to be that interesting." And it's like you've been telling these people, "No, no, see, it's really subtle about being clever. So it's not necessarily obvious how clever it is." If you're just like looking at some screenshots and things, you have to watch it. But yeah. I don't think people realize until you sort of like this episode has tiny lesbians in it. <laughs> Suddenly, it's like, oh, okay. But like, even like, it, it's a very slow burn of a show too. Like, mm. it took it took yeah. like half the show to really get pick up its speed. Yeah. So like, I was talking with somebody who was in the middle of marathoning it, and I was like, "Isn't it the greatest show on fucking television?" And they were like, "Slow down, friend. It's not that. It's it's good, yeah." And I was like, "What mm. episode are you on?" And they were like, "I don't know, like 15." I'm like, "Okay, then. <laughs> You've got a ways to go." It, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Like, if somebody's uh, just watching Avatar for the first time, it's like, eh, "It's oh, pretty yeah. good. I don't get what the big deal is." Are you on <laughs> season one? Yeah. Well, wait around, matey. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like people are. People don't have patience. It's like, here, you gotta let these things establish themselves and stretch their arms out a little bit and, like, yeah. let you get used to it. Things aren't just gonna go, like, go, 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 go. I, I, th- I, think I don't like to, stuff to be like that. I, I think you know, in the modern to, television market, we're used to it being like, we've gotta bring our A-game now, we're gonna fucking get cancelled! <laughs> But I like letting things breathe and take their time mm. to tell their story. And yeah. I guess I notice that a lot of other people like just don't have the patience for that. And it's all because there's so many things to watch nowadays. Yeah. Yep. You got to make quick judgments about stuff and move on to the next thing. I have like three entire seasons of something on Netflix to marathon. Uh, you know, tapping their foot impatiently like Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. But, but what I think is interesting is, you know, we've commented this show has done more world building and more like heavy plot stuff in its one season than Adventure Time yeah. did in like its first three. It took yeah. until the third yeah. season for Adventure Time to get real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it did. The first not two that that's seasons, a, like, not, not, that's not, not that that's yeah. a bad thing because it wasn't trying to do that. No. no, it was just trying to be whatever it was. Yeah, which is a different thing every season. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. become more obvious as we look back. Um. Yeah. Steven Universe, it kind of gently builds up these characters and gently builds the world until you're at a point where you suddenly discover that you actually really, really care about them. Then it starts <laughs> emotionally destroying you. You know what having... I think it is? I th- and, I, and it knew what it was doing from the beginning. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because you go back to the, be- the beginning, the second episode. Yeah. And you're like, mm. wait a minute. <laughs> That's what that thing was in the sky. Like yeah. I think what it is is like you're you are growing your perception of this show in this world along with Steven. Cuz like Steven yeah, yeah. starts out yes. very naive. Steven just thinks he's in this fun little damn adventure where like yeah, we're the crystal gems. We'll always save the day. Like they don't no, they never do that. <laughs> they don't like they they only have to do shit either cuz they're being like we're being invaded and like they're repenting for all their past or you fucked up and did something and it's like yeah, it, it, it's like by the end of the show like Steven's song that he sings with his, his, the duet that he did with his cell phone um was oh there there was even a line in there where he was like, you know, this what we're doing is more dangerous than I thought. Everybody tried to tell me, but I didn't listen to them. Yeah. I mean, when we heard Rebecca talking about it in MAGFest, I don't remember the term that she used, but it was the storytelling device where you start out with a very limited perspective. And the way the story Mm -hmm. unfolds is that everything is already established, but because your perspective is so limited, you're just slowly inching towards the truth. And you're never 
like other characters will know what's going on, but mm-hmm. the way the vision that you're given is very narrow. So you don't know everything and it's the st- it's all about slowly revealing everything. And because we see things through Steven's perspective, that's why we don't know everything from the beginning. And it does just seem like a cute little nothing show because he's just a cute little kid who doesn't you know see everything because how can he possibly see everything nobody tells him everything also he's just a perfect little child and assumes that everything is full of love and happiness yeah on top of everything he's not he doesn't have a single he's cynical a bone baby. in his body <laughs> he's very like sweet. he's the most happy loving creature yeah i mean world. i really like the character of steven and i, I feel quite upset because people are like oh steven's annoying it's like what what yeah. the no, fuck are you talking stop. about i mean i feel bad because uh for a while i i didn't i started watching the show and it was about i think it was at steven the sword fighter when i saw like gifts from that it's sort of like oh my <laughs> god it's making utena references need yes. to watch this show what the hell is this um but before that, I'd been like, oh, they make this show about awesome female characters and they name it after the male guy and they have a male main character. And, and it's a, like, I regret f- thinking that way now because it works so well having yeah. Stephen as this uh, male character who doesn't feel any kind of these any of the typically masculine roles no. and who looks up to female characters is so good and is such a great kind of role model for children absolutely uh, definitely it's just really really good and i really like the character of steven i think that he's really likable he is and he's yeah. you're right he's not your typical male character or kid character i mean i guess he is a typical kid character in a lot of ways but in a Mm. lot of ways he isn't because he is just so empathetic yeah towards everything and everyone and and almost in an inhumanly way sometimes um my i think i think the greatest i think one of the steven's greatest moments or at least in my recent memory because it's it was in the steven bomb was uh rosa scabbard Mm-hmm. When oh, that episode. when Pearl oh when Pearl just like is just objectively like just says cruel things to him because she's upset mm. and just like you didn't eat, like you like what would you know you don't even know or you're like your mother and whatever and then she storms off crying like the first thing Stephen does is turn to Garden and say is she okay and mm. he's tearing up she like like th- like you have like you have every right to be upset at this woman she was aw- she, pearl, pearl can be awful sometimes pearl is a I know, fucking I pain love in pearl, the ass but she's kind of an ass but steven but like steven <laughs> cares but steven cares more about her than himself and like i don't think i've ever seen a male character cry this much and it oh, not be yeah. like a thing he yeah. cries all the time but for very good reasons and for re- believable reasons, and it makes him feel like a real kid, and like, yeah, it's just it's great. We we talked about this in the first episode, but like there was a, a moment in a uh, Bubble Buddies that resonated with me on like a primal, like genetic level. I cannot remember. I like the the part where like he's trying to approach Connie, he messes something up, and then he like drops his bike on the beach and runs away. <laughs> that I I know I can. I know that something like that happened to me as a kid. I cannot remember what it was. It's so deeply repressed. But it, yep. like, like I saw that scene. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, he was <laughs> like, riding his bike on the sand, and then he <laughs> fell over, and he tried to like recover, like with a joke or something. But she didn't notice, and he was just like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ran away crying, like. Oh, so no. It was so real. Like, like, so honest. He's so honest. He doesn't pretend or put up any false pretenses about things. He doesn't care about how people see him. And that's why everybody mm. loves him. Everybody in the whole town <laughs> likes him because he's mm. a good kid and he cares about everybody. Yeah. Even if they don't like the gems, they don't have a problem with Steven usually. Like, even, yeah. even, like, yeah. even, like, Lars basically just treats him like a little brother. Like, he's never, like, pushed him away, really. He's just always like, uh, Steven. Yeah, like, in Steven Bomb, when uh, Steven gets ejected from the car after, you know, having that confrontation with his dad, and everybody who's evacuating the city gets out of their car and walks over to where Steven and his dad is, and is like, 
Greg, is your son okay? Steven, are you okay? Like, everybody in the whole city stops to make sure he's okay. These people yeah. care about their neighbors in 2015. <laughs> but he's yeah, special. So if it was Onion, nobody would have done it. No. Because <laughs> it's Onion. Onion can't handle himself. <laughs> It's very obvious through the whole tone of the show that, you know, this is coming from a female perspective. Um, it's about family. It's coming from a perspective, a family positive well, I'm, perspective. Well, I'm saying there, there's nothing, there's not even like any vestigial, uh, patriarchal, macho crap in this show. Uh, mm. it, it, it's completely shedded all of that away to make something that, that's great. Uh, I guess female perspective isn't the best way to put it, but it's, it's removed from all all the from patriarchy, which is yeah, all, it's a which non-patriarchal, is the true, which is the true enemy. Um, and it, you know, once you strip all that crap away, you know, it what it remains is something that's incredibly good. It, it's mm. it's a profound show. I, yeah. I really like uh, like you you often like hear it people saying take it like a man or man up but yeah. in steven universe it's garnet says take it like a gem and <laughs> yeah. it, it's in uh, coach steven and she says take it like a gem and i was just like ah oh. because <laughs> so, like um, take it like a sentient agendered rock yeah <laughs> like in um in big hero six like the one of the characters had the catchphrase woman up and it's like okay oh. i get what you're doing but it's kind of that's kind of schmaltzy yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah. The 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 show is so done with gender roles in its entirety. Yes, it just, yeah, it's I, just I like mean, no uh, mass. I I really like Lars and Sadie, uh, and like Sadie is a total badass. She's the only normal human in that series to defeat a gem monster on her own. Basically, she, yeah. Actually, she yeah, defeats shit. a gem monster with a stick. And also, <laughs> a pointy I just really, stick. I really like Sadie's character design as well because she's not sexy. She's kind of top heavy and buff and she's like adorable. chunky. She's yeah. really cute. Look, she reminds there. me of my sweet mate from last year. Like the way that she holds herself, the sort yeah. of shape of her body. Like she reminds me of real people I've met. Yeah, you you can think of like I think anybody can think of somebody they've met who looks and is like Sadie. And Rebecca Sugar has said that she based Sadie off of herself when she was in college. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I see that. Rebecca But Re- you know Rebecca's adorable. Yeah, you know, well Rebecca yeah. said all the characters have a little piece of her, which Yeah. You know, Makes sense if you're creating a whole story. I mean, that, that was the yeah. central premise. Is like Stephen uh, is is based off of her brother Stephen, and then like the gems are kind of her personality aspects of her personality growing up with him as uh, her old as his older sister. Oh, that's really cool. You you don't get a lot of shows about little brother with an older sister. Like speaking as somebody who is an older sister with a younger brother you don't see that a lot. It's normally no. Big Brother looking after his little sister. Um, and if there is a little brother, he's, like, annoying, and she never wants to hang out with him. Or, yeah. the, main, or the main character is the little brother, and then the older sister is annoying. See Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. Yeah, all, well, the, all the big sister's just never around. She's always out shopping and out with boys and things. I will I will defend. It's going on with things in fair, but I will defend. I will defend Candace till the day I die. Oh no, Candace is a great character, but I'm saying like that's the archetype that they, you know, yeah, I, that, that's the that's, that's the archetype the they're flipping. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. show followed like the archetypes for maybe one and a half episodes before they're like, <laughs> "Fuck it, we let's can't do just, this." Let's just make everybody question reality with meta humor. <laughs> it's like they pitched the show and then they they got into the run and was like, oh, this is boring. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do this every episode in earnest. <laughs> but yeah, like Steven, he's designed to be like the ultimate little brother and to like embody all the good things about being yeah. a little brother. Um, and he's just so cute. I mean, when they, the way they stretch his facial expressions is just Did- so amazing. 
I... Didn't the animators say that they don't believe in on model in that that's show? Yeah. Like, that's something that Ian, Ian Jones Cordy said in an ask that he yeah. subscribes to the uh, belief that if a character is recognizable, it's on model. Um, mm. And I you think... can definitely see that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That... Yeah, they they push it for the sake of comedy or for emotion or expression. Like yeah, like even in um um the first episode of season two or the last episode of Steven Bomb, it's like when Steven's like really emotional he but they're still like squishing and stretching his body to like really emphasize like how his, lonely and how sad he is. His face like, is like half melted in that episode. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so cute. You're like, and you're just like, it's Steven Also yeah. like with with different people storyboarding it's like they each have their own like yeah. slight spins. Like you I think well I think that like the the common viewer like probably doesn't even think to look for that stuff. But as but as as like animation people, I at least I like to look mm. at that stuff and try and see like how it was bored and stuff. And one time I saw a post. It's Tumblr, so it's gone now. I'll never find it. <laughs> yeah. um, it was this long post of like different screen caps, and somebody had actually picked out based on the because two people storyboard every episode. I think at least uh, two write it. Yeah, and so they they took screenshots and put who who drew that based on how they draw Steven. And it was neat, because, like, I've, like, mm. their screen caps, I've seen every episode, but, you know, you don't really think about, like, oh, okay, like, they look different because different people are drawing him. And it's just really interesting to this, think about. This past week, I uh, went back and rewatched a lot of older episodes that it uh, mm. slipped from my mind. And, like, uh, like I remember on a lot of those early ones, Pearl's facial proportions were different. The nose sat on her face, like, in a different position. Yeah, and oh. as as the show's gone on, I feel like possibly the artists have become more comfortable uh, exaggerating their faces. I mean, in Rose's Scabbard, Pearl spent the whole time looking like a legit Tengu. Yeah, her face was <laughs> yes. out of control in that episode, and also in uh, the the recent uh, Uncle Grandpa crossover when they're in uh, the SB one two nine negative space. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Oh, pearls. I loved it. Oh, my God. They just cranked her up to 11 for that episode. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're just like, hey, Pearl's going to lose her mind this episode. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, th- this yes. is something I just found out, Nina. Um, for you, you said uh, that the show first really clicked with you with the second episode, Laser Light Cannon. Yeah. That was actually the first episode Ooh. in production order. Well, there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, Gem Glow was the third. Huh. Huh. Well, I mean, I liked Gem Glow too, but. L- Laser Light Cannon uh, really lets you know what the show's about. Yeah, I yeah. Think Oh, yeah. Because uh, um, I mean, the, like... the whole element of family is in that one really heavily. Yeah. And it's, it's not mm-hmm. in Gem Glow. Yeah, no. the, the second time I watched that, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's very emotional. Um, yeah. And there's so many layers to it, and it, but it feels real. Like I just, I love the scene where Stephen is just crawling through his dad's storage garage, and his dad yes. is like telling him the story that he's already heard like a million times, but he's like having fun with it. It's like an alligator showed up. Like he's just <laughs> being a kid and having fun, and they're just, it's cute. I don't know. It's just so well thought out. Um, so how do we want to move along now? Um, the rest uh, of this episode. Gasp. I guess cover all the crazy shit that happened in... Stephen Bomb. Stephen Bomb? Let's get back to that. Stephen um, Bomb. Yeah, I should I should look up the episode order so I can remember what the... Because it, it, so, it was such an intense week. Yeah, um, it was Rose's like... Scabbard, The Message, Political Power, The Return, and Jailbreak. Mm. Well, and, and then... And then, um, and then full disclosure. Yeah. yeah, which is technically season two, but it was the epilogue yeah. to Stephen. Yeah, I, I like the idea of having an epilogue episode. Yeah, like, I, it was really neat. I may have commented yeah, yeah. about this on another episode, but like Stephen Baum, save for Rose's Scabbard, which was self-contained, from the message onward, mm. it was basically a movie. Yeah. The paste for TV, which allows you to do some interesting stuff, including have an epilogue. You can't have an yeah. epilogue to the movie unless you're Return of the King. And which is yeah, just like, I fuck mean, you, here's another movie. <laughs> in which yeah, there's I, no conflict. 
Yes. Because we're not going to do the other epilogue from the book where there was conflict that was even more anticlimactic than all these nine scenes of people happily crying. God. I don't care how much coke you yeah. drank, 11-year-old Nikki. You can't leave this theater because we're not done with our 12 endings. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I love that they take the time to have that closure. Exactly. Like, it's Ooh, it's I definitely think, uh, needed. And I think... Because it's got ten minute long episodes, they can do that. Like if it was a more standard show with like twenty minute long episodes, I don't think they'd be able to do that. No, probably not. Maybe not. Because like you'd, you'd like either have that. to you'd, you'd either have to stretch that for twenty two minutes or cut stuff from Jailbreak to tack it on at the very end. Yeah, it, yeah. it's almost like webcomic pacing in a way, like yeah, shot and punchy. It's almost, yeah, it's almost like. This ten minute format is like perfect, for which is so weird because um, after the uh, the first lapis two parter uh, came out, a lot of people were remarking, and, and as myself included, that you know this longer format works really well for Steven Universe. I wonder if they're going to do more of this in the future. And then Jones mm. Quarty said, "No, our intention was from the beginning always to do eleven minutes." And I mean, you can tell they can they can do a lot with eleven yeah. minutes. So what they they'll can, do is yeah. they'll do like a saga of episodes, but each episode is self-contained except for the ones that are explicitly part one, part two, which are Ocean Gym, Mirror Gym, and Return Jailbreak. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I feel like they've got a better handle on this eleven-minute format than like Adventure Time does, because like uh, yeah, oftentimes an Adventure so. Time episode will be like you didn't. We didn't. Do, you didn't finish. You didn't do that. You didn't much. do anything. Which is why it's always so powerful when they actually do, such as um, yeah, I remember you, oh, the best, yeah. the best episode. So good, yeah. Because yeah, that, that one was perfectly. Uh... Oh, you know why? It's because just... that one, was, that one was Rebecca Sugar. That was her last God one. Damn it, Rebecca Sugar. <laughs> she's just, she just has this uh, fucking on point. Yeah, yeah, she's really good at it. Really good. Um... It's... So the, uh, the Stephen bombs. So we started with uh... Rose's scabbard, um, mm. which uh, we learn a little bit more. We learn a lot more about Pearl and Rose's relationship. We we learned that Pearl was incredibly gay that episode. <laughs> <laughs> Although some people are still like, no, she just she just really really wanted to serve Rose really really <laughs> respected her and it's sort of like well I mean I feel like it's both of, see, yeah, it's definitely it's a both, both. like it's there's definitely def- both. Yeah. there's definitely a romantic tinge to it but it's yeah. not a sort of pure yeah I, I, want I mean she, remind, quotes, she pure reminded love. me a lot of like yeah. Sir Lancelot yeah like he yeah. was like like he was a knight but also in like in love with the with the woman he was yeah serving. and I mean but, but I, 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 what Pearl seems to have for Rose is a lot more, I would say, adoration yeah, and like, um, yeah, it's, almost it's, obsession uh, rather than like true it's, blue. It's oh, an yeah, no. infatuation. It wouldn't work yeah. as a relationship. Exactly. No, they couldn't exactly. get together uh, because it's so, so like it's not one sided in the sense that per, that Rose doesn't care about Pearl. It's one-sided in the sense that Pearl has put Rose on such a pedestal that yeah. it just could never work as a relationship. It's um, too asymmetrical. Yeah. 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 Um, and not just because of their their figures. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's really fascinating to me because Rose is just so in love with this person and is always like talking about oh rose believed in this and rose says this and rose says that but mm. pearl doesn't always share rose's opinions about things mm. in fact she kind of rarely does in yes. a lot of ways it's almost like she learned it but she didn't actually internalize yes. any of rose's she doesn't teachings. know why she doesn't know why she just knows rose wants rose would want to do this i have no idea why she would want to do this but this is what rose would want to do so we'll do it and people have sort of been speculating about the nature of Pearl as a gem because in this episode, um, Rose refers to her as my Pearl, which might be just a term of endearment. But then later in the return, when mm. Jasper is yelling at, you know, being like, you suck and you suck and you suck. <laughs> fuck her, you and fuck you. Her thing to Pearl Jasper, was, bitch. you know, a, a defective def- Pearl, a defective Pearl. Mm. 
And it's like, okay. Is Pearl a model of gem? Maybe, like we, because we, here's the thing. Pearl is the only gem that's not geologically created that we've seen so far. It's an organic base. That, that was gem. that criticism. They go to the uh, gem homeworld, there's some giant oyster just barfing pearls. <laughs> that was that, like, semi-serious goof I made, you know. That's like I, I joked that my only problem with the show was that a pearl is kind of not a gem and ex- and completely not a crystal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's, of course, completely facetious, but... You know, you know, so th- th- that, that might be a thing. Yeah, it might be something like that. Yeah. to that. Because it, it would explain story. her... I mean, like, just her complete and utter, like... Yeah, her perfectionism and... and her devotion and... yeah. And it's she definitely excellent. sees them as soldiers more than anyone else. Yeah. In the group. Yeah, she's the only one who seems to not have any kind of like like really troubled memories of the war. She was just like, "Yeah, we did it." <laughs> yeah. And um... everyone else is like war, war war like war is hell, war never changes the horror, and she's just <laughs> like, "Yeah." So the next episode after Rose's scabbard was the message. Yeah. Yes. One, yes. one other yeah. thing about Rose's Scabbard is that there was like a trilogy of episodes disconnected of like, we're going to go real heavy into each of these gems. The first one was On the Run. Oh, um, yeah, it's yeah. all about, uh, all about Amethyst. Amethyst. Yeah, see, uh, we saw a preview of On the Run at MAGFest, and it was just the, uh, the <laughs> it was the Stephen talking about the No Home Boys and oh, the yeah. the song montage. So we thought this yeah. was going to be a fun episode. Oh, I, I thought it was just going to be a filler episode. It was just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll watch it. It's going to be just a everything silly filler they, episode. Everything they didn't show us was important <laughs> plot shit. So they completely <laughs> yes. conned us. Yeah. Um cuz like I saw so many people like reacting to uh Stephen Bones like, "Oh, it's so emotional. Where did all this stuff come from?" And I'm here sitting like, "This is exactly what I expected the show to be yeah, doing at this point." This like stage, this has been yeah. built like I obviously yeah. I was affected by all this cuz it was intense, but I wasn't surprised that they did no, any of it. It's like did no. they no. even watch I mean, Lion I mean, 3 straight to video? I, yeah, it was like it was after shit. Lion 3. It was after Lion 3 when I'm like, yeah. "There's all bets are off. This show will do anything to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ocean Gem was bad enough. And it's just yeah. like, ooh. And then, you know, we had the return of Lapis. Which oh, man, was yeah. really fascinating because... Yeah, now let's uh, talk about the message. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's two things going on. In the, the the main thing was Greg. Greg. And his relationship to Greg. the gems. And how he's always felt inadequate compared to them and they just never gave a shit about him enough to even talk to him or regard him as an individual worth mm. worthy of their time and, and part of the, there's resentment in there because he's part of the reason why rose is gone yeah, yeah. Mm. and as we saw in maximum capacity like not just because she's gone gone but like during the time they spent together she wasn't spending as much time with the gems so mm. um but you know, Jem has a chance... I mean, Jem. <laughs> Greg has a chance to sort of redeem himself Gem in the eyes of the gems and sort of... What if Steven's name was Jim? <laughs> Jim the Gem? <laughs> no. <laughs> but then Lapis comes in at the end. Oh, yeah. And it's and like... it's so intense. It's, it's like this... The, I mean, I don't she think She cares. A kids show where an alien invasion is treated so seriously and feels so frightening. And it was just like three of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I want this on the record uh, that uh, Nina, in a previous episode, you <laughs> called it that this is going to be like Dragon Ball. Yep. They're they're Dragon Ball. <laughs> Freaking like- Peridot and Jasper or Vegeta and Nappa. Yeah, oh my like God. everybody was making that oh, comparison, and right. everybody have you was making... seen that that fan art someone did? Oh, I love the fan art where they photoshopped them into being Vegeta. Not she even has like she's tiny and she has big hair. Oh my God! And it's pointy, <laughs> oh and I was like, oh. yeah. And the shoes, 
Just the, like only, the, only the, the only difference is where Vegeta was secretly the stronger one. Peridot is, is just a nerd. She's Sho- <laughs> they shoved her in a locker and <laughs> her into space. <laughs> yeah, but like I want, I want to know that Nina called that. I don't remember what episode it was, or like what episode of this show it was when you called. It may have been, um, it may have been Warp Tour. Yeah, I think it was Warp Tour when we were talking about it. Probably. Yeah, that you got this idea that they're actually like an invading, uh, assimilating race, and that the crystal gems are defectors, and that yeah. turns out to be exactly what the fuck it was. Yeah. Yeah, like, and, yeah. I, that's really cool. So you called that back in January. Yep. Wow. Back in January. <laughs> yeah, January. That was a fun adventure, you guys. Um, but yeah, Lapis does, does, comes... Does January come after Desu Ember? <laughs> oh, that'll be, no. That's, that'll be when we want to do eight weeks of anime. I can't do that. You know I can't do that. <laughs> but Lapis returns, and it's really powerful because... When we, the last we saw Lapis, she was really mad at the crystal yeah. gems for a good reason. I, you know, I went back and I rewatched that episode, and yeah. it dawned on me, and I'm like, "Wow, all of gem technology is powered by other gems, and they're just totally cool with that." And even Lapis was like, "They didn't even try to see if I was alive. They just used me for years and years and years, and they didn't even they knew that I was in there." And it's like, "Oh." She, Jesus Christ. Um, I'm but... really looking forward to knowing what the deal is with the gem monsters, now that we know that they're corrupted gems. Yeah, I really want to know the gem life cycle. And Pearl actually explained it to Steven in um, uh, Frybo. I want to... Yeah, it was Frybo. But Steven was having this monologue over Pearl explaining it, being oh, like... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's really explaining something. I haven't been paying attention my pants <laughs> like and i'm like steven she's saying everything i um, mean we um, gotta extract that audio yes but um but lapis actually warns them well she warns steven because she's yeah. still she doesn't see steven as one of them and she's honestly afraid for the earth which is yeah. kind of interesting because she didn't like the earth but you know now that she went to gem homeworld and it's like nothing like Ooh. it used to be, and she doesn't have a place in it anymore. She's like, I'm scared of what they're gonna do to the Earth, Steven. I'm scared for you. God, yeah, because you know, just like I mean that that didn't dawn on me at first. It didn't just because like the even even six thousand years ago or however long the gems were already so advanced from humans today that it never dawned on me how even further advanced they got in, in the interim until yeah. the the like. The, the the one where they're chasing the marble around, they go back to the kindergarten, and like she calls it outdated technology, and I'm like, oh shit! Yeah, it yes. avoids the uh, it avoids the uh, the Star Wars problem of every era in Star Wars being technologically identical. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, re- I really um, like liked that. So after the message, we had uh, political power, which was kind I of a breather. It- it was, and it had a really interesting message, this idea of adults protecting, like, protecting, not telling people the full truth to protect them. Uh, and how that's was... not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, because normally it's not like, oh no, you should always tell the truth, and it's not like, should you? Really? Like, is that really what we should tell kids? Because really... People lie all the time, and it's not necessarily for malicious reasons. Yeah, like, because, like, it didn't even, like, I I like that it, like, it didn't even necessarily say one thing or the other, but it just, like, it just explained that this is a thing that happens, and you can't, you can't hate them as much, you can't hate, like, the parental figures as much for doing it, because they, like, they, sometimes they do it out of, sometimes they do it, like, whether or not you agree with it, they're not doing it maliciously, they, yeah. they they they're they're just trying to keep you as safe as they can in a, in, yeah. a wor- in a world that is out of their control as much as it's out of yours. Yeah, yeah. and the gems at the end saying we're scared is just like holy Garnet shit. saying we're scared. Yeah, Garnet, who is like this invincible titanium woman. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just yeah. I mean, really... my my personal worldview is that authority figures are always exclusively lying to you, and. <laughs> 
occasionally it's for a good reason, and you just need to get some judgment for to uh, pick it apart. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and the, it almost felt like a rehash of the test in a way, where it was, like, yeah. about being a parent in a way, and, like, yeah. how it's – there's no – easy answer and sometimes you don't even know what you're doing and for the kid to realize that and not be angry about it yeah and to just sort of accept it yeah Yeah. also even if it is a you finish no sorry i was just gonna say it also the the bit in that episode that always sticks in my head is just mayor dewey asking if steven's sisters are home (laughs) and calling them the tall one the purple one and the hot one (laughs) and steven (laughs) being like and Stephen being like, sisters? <laughs> sisters? Because he doesn't... It's so fascinating because, you know, the gems are these non-gendered beings. Yeah. Yeah. And for them to even have the slightest gendering upon them like that. Like also, like the, like, also, like ha- also like having a family label, because I almost feel like he would have yeah. reacted the same if he explicitly called them his moms. Like, they're not yeah. really... They're yeah. just the gems to him. I mean, yeah. the fa- fans always refer to them as his moms because yeah, effectively like the, they are that's, that's and it's a cute is. it's a cute thing to call it but like technically yeah. no they're not no Stephen yeah. has a mom see them that and way Stephen has a mom he has a dad and he has the gems mm-hmm. and so that's, that's his family that yeah. was a really interesting because that was the first time it was really called to light in the show so i really yeah. like that moment mm-hmm. and, I, and i like that Stephen had no answer i feel like he just sort of mentally shut down for a minute <laughs> kind of trying like, and failing duh. to process it <laughs> trying and failing to process like which one's the hot one? <laughs> yes. Pearl and Garnet are both pretty tall. <laughs> I mean, they're all taller than him. I mean, yeah, Amethyst even is Amethyst a little is taller. a little bit taller, and it's mostly the hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Mayor Dewey was—it was really fun to get a light into the world of Mayor Dewey. He's a character yeah. I definitely wouldn't think we would get yeah, an did, episode about. Yeah, not in the first season. <laughs> no, sure, yeah, like. There he was, Mayor Dewey. Yeah, and previously all he did was try to refill the ocean with a hose and his tears. (laughs) And also kiss a baby and (laughs) unveil the largest bowl of ice cream. (laughs) Yeah, he's clearly just a bullshit man. (laughs) Well, that's what he said it. He was like, that's what politics is, Stephen. This town has a population of maybe 60 people. (laughs) No, like 15 it's very small. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just a tourist trap. Mm. Um, and then we've got the uh, two-parter of the return oh, yeah. of Jailbreak, which functions, among other things, as Garnet's it's... heavy episode, where yeah. the... Um... Well, the second part is Garnet heavy. The yeah, first that, that part was Jailbreak. is... Um, all of them, in a way. Yeah. It, it was Stephen afraid for, like, the first time seeing Stephen really really afraid and that was kind of hard to watch Mm. and i was just like oh my god steven because just him cowering and like jasper grabbing him by the shirt and him just like having that wobbly voice and being like i like terrified it's as soon as garnet is destroyed he's like oh my god like i've never seen him that way yeah. yeah, like I knew, like I I had known enough theories to be like, okay, this is when Garnet's gonna be a fusion. But even like, regardless yeah. of knowing that she was gonna be fine, I was just like, I was I was probably almost as equally traumatized as Stephen, just like watching her explode in front of me. Just, no, it was scary. Like, like when, when Jasper was like holding him up and like yelling in his face and like talking about stomping his mom into the ground, and Stephen was just like fucking near crying and i'm just like oh my god she's gonna kill steven it's really like the fact that she always speaks to steven as if he is rose is or a thing yeah Yeah, Yeah, she's like what is that what is that thing she doesn't comprehend because she doesn't understand the concept she probably she it might not have even crossed their minds that they could even crossbreed like that or what would happen because like the gems don't know half the stuff steven's capable of I mean, this this is what sets off, like, half of the episodes is the gem, specifically Pearl, underestimating Steven's ability. That's how the the game starts. Oh, yeah. Like, that was, like, I saw it broken down once as, like... um, Oh, that post is so funny. Yeah, it's like, (laughs) Steven, one day you'll be able to do the thing. Steven does the thing. (gasps) That's every episode. (laughs) Yep. 
Um, and we're going to talk about yeah. the game later in the show because I think it's uh, really worth talking about. Also, it's Nikki great. always wanted to make this a video game podcast. So <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I now have an excuse for once. Uh, so then there's uh, Jailbreak, where we get finally we get the song by Estelle. Like I know yes! she finally it's gets amazing to sing. Amazing that they they have this like the most famous singer on the series. <laughs> They Go honestly the entire season without a song, which is they, really, they probably yeah. they, they probably were legit. Like we're gonna save it. We're gonna fucking yeah, blow people's so. balls off. <laughs> yeah, I but... mean, it still blows my mind that Estelle is even on this show. I yeah, love it. and she loves it, and like she puts a lot into it, and she yeah. gets it. Yeah, yeah, she's so good because like, like her her acting is so deadpan, but it's not it's not yes. lazy deadpan. She's in it. She yeah. knows what she's yeah, doing. Yeah, she can act because she's been like, especially Ooh. in the later half of the season, she's had a lot of moments where she's where yeah. she's really showed her chops. Yeah, yeah. she's and and like not even just for drama for comedy as well like. I think, like, the thing that sealed it for me is, oh, what's, what's the episode? It's, um, oh, I know, it's Fusion Cuisine, where she's on the phone to Connie's oh, mom. with Connie's mom. Yes. Like, yes, the children are playing swords. Sorry, playing with swords. Oh, no, they are bleeding. They are dead. Don't call me again, it's just. Oh, and, and then she can't... hands it back, and she's like, "I panicked." Yeah, that, that's <laughs> Garnet panicking. So funny. <laughs> oh, she's great, and we get to see how even more great she is because you yes. know we always had this idea that she was a fusion. I mean, Nikki and Tooch yeah. broke that news to me on the air, and that was probably fun for listeners because I was just like, "What." <laughs> um, yeah, because once you once you look at the clues, it's like this was so obvious. The yeah, main yeah. the main thing is how she opened the door to her, her room in the temple. It's like, oh, she activates a ruby and a sapphire on the thing. Yeah, yeah. And I like how yeah. Ian J- Jane's Ian Jones Cordy uh, reveal like subtle, super subtle hits that they did like in the uh, opening sequence when she's uh, lounging on the beach. Two shooting stars go by. Mm. Or in oh, wow. in the pilot, like everybody's like original uh, uh, shot of each character. She's got like a fire and ice motif going on, mm-hmm. and then Amethyst is just laying on a bunch of tigers. <laughs> the pilot does some weird things. Have you seen a full body shot of Pilot Pearl? It's weird. She's got yeah, what... fucking clown feet. <laughs> Gosh. Uh-oh. I might still like Pilot Amethyst's design better. Like, obviously, uh, in the simplified design of the the rest of the show required, it, it wasn't. I do stick. sort of miss her fanny pack. I miss yeah, the fanny, I was about to I miss say the, the fanny only pack real... and the hair clip. Yeah, the yeah. only real difference is the fanny pack. But then they brought it back for a beach party. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah the and only difference like, is with, ah! the only difference with Amethyst is she had a hair clip, she had the fanny pack, and since. Everybody's signature, like everybody has a star on their person. Her star was a hair clip. Mm. The tears in her leggings were just ovals. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Pearl was like a completely different character. I that's feel well, that's part of why. Had, like so. star decals. Like they all yeah. looked like they were in a cheap doll line where they kept reusing the same mold on all the different characters. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, yeah, the, I think making the more incorporated yeah. star stuff was better. Yeah, I was I one of those people. Uh, I was one of those people who was originally down on the redesigns, but like, no, they're much better. I was yeah. cautiously, I was cautiously optimistic. Like these guys know what they're doing. I trust them. But in retrospect, I'm like, why did I not immediately just be like, this is so much better? And Square I think cause... Afro, like, hello, I was sold. I was like, yes. I was sold on Garnet. Garnet was like, yeah. yes, that is amazing. I think it was because like they were still images. I didn't see how yeah. animated it was. I A mean, lot of stuff can yeah. look different once it's moving. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Pearl's that, redesign Pearl's... was very shocking. Yes. It's well, there was too many baubles. There was too much stuff on them. Yeah. It really yeah, it fits was busy. her personality better, I think. Pearl's redesign. Yeah. Because yeah. she was I mean, kinda... speaking as somebody who watched the series before I watched the pilot, for me, it's mm-hmm. like watching the pilot going, whoa, this is weird. What the hell? Yeah. These, these designs, apart from Amethyst, who hasn't changed that much, I'm just like, no, those designs don't fit. Uh, don't fit Garnet and Pearl. So. No. Yeah. Because Pearl just looks like a really kind of cool, kind of hipster girl in the pilot. Yeah, from Williamsburg. Like, yeah. Whereas, like, you, she has this 
ballerina look. Like it's very delicate, very neat look in the regular series that I think really suits her personality better. Yeah, totally. You know that it took me until like last week to realize that Pearl changed outfits after Steven the Swordfighter. I didn't notice that forever really? either. Yeah, you I'm did it? I'm such a dumb piece of shit. <laughs> you didn't? Like, okay, I didn't notice that Garnet changed outfits when I first watched Steven Bomb until somebody pointed oh, it yeah. out to me, but Pearl was obvious uh, to Gar- me. Garnet's we went the whole out- episode without seeing Pearl, so when she came back, it was like, Pearl, she looks enough like how she used to. My brain's not gonna question it. <laughs> but, like, like, they never changed her outfit in the theme song. She's still wearing the, uh, it's not a yeah. tutu, but some yeah. kind it's of ballerina. It's a peplum. Thank yeah. you, Nina. Yeah, it's, it's that Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I like her new outfit a little bit better. Oh, I like it too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, At I, first I, I didn't, but now I do like the new one better. I feel like the old one had too many colors. Yeah, I almost. think in retrospect it did. I liked the pastel y look of it, but like. Yeah, I like the peplum, but that yeah. was. every. I don't know. It was too much Probably stuff. Probably a painter animate, and yeah. But yeah, like uh, that's when she pretty was funny. Coming... It's like, she's too hard to animate. Let's kill her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Run when she was through. coming out of the pearl, you saw her like um, silhouette. You saw it change, and it went from her pilot costume to her old costume to her new costume, and then she yeah. reformed yeah. in the light. It actually, I think it also for a second went went into like her like pre pilot design at first. Yeah, probably because like, like Rebecca mm-hmm. Sugar has like, had drew like a couple promotional just like testing like drawings before the pilot even, and they looked even different to her. Yeah, yeah, Pearl's has been through, like, so many different kind of iterations. Yeah. All right. And, and then we... where they landed on us, ah, fuck it, let's just make Brendan small. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just make her head just two cones and the back one is hair and it's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Garnet. It's so weird that Garnet's, af- I'm looking at uh, a side-by-side of her, uh, Original outfit and her uh, current outfit. New outfit. And the, the, I think it, I, I marginally prefer the old outfit. Me mostly. too. I kind of yeah. prefer the old outfit. I like that asymmetrical leg yeah, thing. The, me too. Because yeah. her, her hips are such a strange shape that when you yeah. like divide them evenly, it looks it kind of draws attention yeah. to yeah. how odd Also, her I don't like her skin being purple now. I kind of like yeah, that's the weird. kind of... Reddy, reddish red brown color scheme she had going on before i guess the purple makes more sense now that we know she's a fusion of a red gem and a blue gem and it's kind of yeah uh, and I like the like outfits the are one. supposed to like represent like where they got injured like pearl was stabbed yeah. in the stomach so her new oh. outfit has a bandage going around yeah. her stomach and garnet was split in half so her outfit is split in half jesus christ yeah. you're so smart I know, right? <laughs> also, I think Everything the... about this show is super smart. Yeah, <laughs> I think really her clever. Her uh, afro might be smaller now too. It is. Yeah, I yeah, think it is, and smaller. it's a rounder shape, which I don't like. I, I like the big square afro. <laughs> we gotta kill yeah. her again. Square. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, like, it. <laughs> well, they just have to have Steven's birthday episode soon so she can unfuse and have that episode and then refuse yes. and have a different outfit. Perfect. <laughs> so, um, so does this mean there's gonna, so does this mean Amethyst at some point has to die? <laughs> All of them, except, like, both I mean, of them, Amethyst, like, two out of three. They've said, like, they said in uh, Steven the Salt Fighter that it's, it's usually Amethyst who dies. And in like, the game, it's usually Amethyst. Has she been... If it, has it felt like to you guys that she's targeted more than the other two? No, she's definitely targeted more yeah, than the yeah. others because she can attack everyone at once. So, so the AI f- targets her. She draws aggro. So far, the only so far the only gem I've had who's died is Garnet. I mean, I'm still kind of not done with Jailbreak, but <laughs> okay, we can keep talking so, about Jailbreak. Yeah, we can touch. Oh God, it's just that sequence is so beautiful. <laughs> Which, the way that they film, the way that they choreographed it with the song and like, mm-hmm. uh, and so like, like Kate, you mentioned like it was kind of shocking that that you know it wasn't a lip to lip thing, but Ruby and Sapphire kissed. They kissed. They totally kissed. Uh, and she that was, totally uh, slurped that tear. Yeah. She, yeah she, <laughs> 
I mean, that was a, a <laughs> that that sequence is just beautiful to watch. Like it the, really the is they, the way they run together and just there's so much tenderness in it, and then. They kind of it's it's that sort of did they hurt you? No, did they hurt you? Who cares? I do. And then they kind of just spin around, like in just, Castle in the Sky. Yeah, and they and spin just, around, and I'm like, ah. and it just kind of just warps. And then there's this wonderfully animated just Garnet falls to the floor with this great weight to it, and she just swings forwards, and the laughter them laughing morphs into Garnet laughing. And then she's just like, Stephen, thank you. And it's just, oh, that, that sequence is so good. It's I would, just... I, I wanna, I would wanna have been, okay, this sounds, this sounds bad. I would wanna have been in the room with a child who was watching <laughs> that episode and t- 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 <laughs> yeah. t- too much, too much of a dumb kid to realize, to see all the signs that she's obviously a fusion and didn't put it together. Yes. Like, I wanna see the look on their face and they're like, oh, it's Garnet! <laughs> well, you didn't have to be. <laughs> Frankly, it didn't have to be a child. There were plenty of people who were like, what? Really? No, there are plenty of people who were like denying this whole thing. They were like, no. Garnet <laughs> well, has her own identity. I don't like the idea of her being dumb. two people. <laughs> but yeah, I was really surprised that they were able to get away with that. Yeah. Because, uh, I... Somebody asked Ian and was like, are Ruby and Sapphire in a romantic relationship? Maybe not since it's a kid's show. They are adorable, though. But Jailbreak the Return was my fave episode. Great work. You're all an inspiration. And then Ian says, they are two cute cartoon characters and they are in love. Why wouldn't that be allowed on a kid's show? <laughs> Legend of Korra, I mean. <laughs> yeah. But, like, that wasn't on TV. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not even on TV but and Garnet the they was could like, get hold the of. Whole, the chorus was Garnet saying, I am love. I am like, made of love. I am <laughs> made of love. Like, yeah. that's what I am. I'm the love of these two individuals becoming one individual. And it's just like, and you know, we all know that the gems are girls. They all have female yeah. pronouns and stuff. Even though um, Ruby is a little bit more tomboyish, I guess. Yeah, I mean, a Ruby's lot of based on like a, Ruby Ruby's should count as a dude, and I'm just like, no, shut up. <laughs> like, Ruby's based off of uh, the main character from uh, Ian Jones Cordy's uh, pilot, uh, Lakewood Plaza Turbo. Uh, she's based off oh. of Ko, oh, yeah. who's voiced by the original <laughs> English voice of Goku. Oh, well, that's well yeah, cool. the, his his kid voice, but I, I knew him more as Gohan because Dragon Ball hey. Z aired first over here, really. Kind yeah. Of, well, the, the Funimation dub. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the other two main characters are basically Leela and then Ian Jones Cordy playing a nerdy Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was the weaker of the two pilots, but I would really like to see it picked up. Although, I mean, Ian's really busy. Yeah. yeah. He's busy. We can wait. We can't wait. Def. Ian Jones Cordy is the man. He's. I, I was so happy to find out that it was him working because because it was. I was. I got into Steven Universe. It's like, oh my god, I love this show. This is my new favorite show. And then it's like, oh my god, the guy who made RPG World is working on this. Because I was crazy about that web comic when I was. Me- when I was a teenager, it's like me too. RPG World, wow, it's so good. Well, that's <laughs> how I felt about Adventure Time when I found out he mm. was working on Adventure Time because I yeah. remember, you know, when I read his comic, he did a lot of posts where he said what he yeah. wanted to do was be a cartoonist, and he actually yeah. had that little mini cartoon, that semi-autobiographical yeah. cartoon, and he's like, "That's what I want to do is make cartoons." And then when I found out that he was making cartoons, I was like, ah! "Yay!" Yeah, because yeah, like there was a bit of a disappointment because. Um, RPG World largely went on its forever hiatus because yeah, he he got his he got like a job in the industry. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like oh, I, that, I'm, that's... And... I'm happy. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, at first it was like, oh man, no more RPG World. But I would rather have Steven Universe than RPG World. Oh, of course. Yeah. Like. Oh, oh, here's the thing. More than I, that, like, just, I, I, oh, okay. I'm I'm just happy on a personal level, just because like um, the like that's where that's what I want to end up. Yeah, like, it's so nice when people's dreams come true. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know it's cheesy, but it's nice. Like, he worked yeah. really hard, and he's really he talented, did. and he's where he wants to be right now. Um, but back to Ruby and Sapphire, like, I know that there was some people, like, talking about, like, you know, is, is Ruby blind, or is Sapphire blind, or, like, what's the deal? And yeah. I don't remember who it was, but Joe Johnson or whatever, that one guy mm. who works on the show, said that what was happening there was that... 
Ruby wasn't used to seeing without future vision. Right. That and yeah. she doesn't have future vision when they're not fused. And so people are wondering... People are assuming that Sapphire just has the one eye under her bangs, maybe. Mm, that would make sense, given that Garnet has three eyes, I guess. And she's a perfect fusion, so... Yeah. Oh, that'd so be... she's only got two arms and two legs, whereas, like, we've seen other fusions that aren't quite so perfectly fused have got, like, four arms, and then you yeah. get, of course, in that episode, you get to see Malachite, the fusion of um, Lapis and uh, Jasper, Jasper, which is a really like Horrifying. imperfect fusion, like, a like freaking Silent Hill it. monster. It's, it's so it, imperfect like... they have they don't have their, its own unique voice. It's the two actors, the actresses, yeah. and it, it's it's like a centaur. I thing. was gonna say it was the human centipede, but no, it's a uh, asphyxia from from Silent Hill uh, Homecoming, which isn't a good yeah. game, mm. but like it's a cool boss design. Yeah, it's I was going to say arms. they're a human centipede, but then I went, no, they're a gym centipede. Then I went, no, that's a thing. Yeah. Oh, centipede. <laughs> that was the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I subscribe to the theory that, like, the more perfect the fusion, the more, like, a humanoid bipedal. it is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah two, definitely. Two arms, I, two legs means it's a good fusion. I dig And then that. you get ones that are fairly balanced, like, say, Opal, who is relatively balanced but she falls apart easily because Pearl and Amethyst will be in sync about something when they can have a common goal but as soon as something shocking happens they'll fall apart because their reactions to being shocked are so different yeah I think yeah. at least that's what I think and then yeah. Alexandra it's a monster yeah, yeah. Well, because it's three gems. Yeah, I, um, it's and, four gems. It's four gems. Four gems. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, yeah. And that, that's um, the other thing. Like that may be part of why um, Sugalite is was so out of control. Is that it's a, it's three gems. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. I do love Sugalite. Like the most stable awesome. fusion we've seen, other than Garnet, her, uh, of course, was Opal. Is pretty stable. Not. Mm. I agree. And I, I like that interpretation of Sugalite better than the whole racial coding thing that was underlined that episode, which I know wasn't intentional, but was well, kind of... Here, here's the thing about Sugalite that a lot of people, like, um, gathered. Um, mm. They're based on Indian mythology. The gen- the fusions. You know, the, mm. full, the whole forearm thing. And yeah. Sugalite strongly resembles Kali, the Hindu goddess, that yeah. crazy with the teeth, like especially with like the teeth and like the intensity. Um and that's really what I got from it. I didn't get an ape monster like everybody else got no. from oh, it. I it's, never no. Yeah, well, people were reading it as like, oh, you have the two coated non-white gems fuse. Two coated black. Two coated black gems fuse and they create an unstoppable ape monster. And it's like, I've never no, absolutely not. Being coated black. Yeah, like, like I, I, mean, I can... I voice actress is Asian. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I can see that, but I don't think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's coated enough to really... It's not explicitly that. coded, but like, one thing uh, in an ask by Ian Jones... Cordy, he's like, you know, Amethyst's lips really bother me. I, I hate the way they intersect with the other lines on their face. And he's like, you know, maybe assess why you, you have such a problem with her lips. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, but like, l- like on you, that level, yeah. 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 But even Opal, like, you see the, the original um, sequence of her summoning her bow, her her forearms make that, um, that yeah. symbol that's that we now know as a swastika, but like, it's traditionally the, it, goes other, it goes the other way it goes the other it's way it's the opposite way it's, it's and, it, and it's not and it's not a uh, tilted yeah yeah and yeah. she manji. yeah but her yeah, arms the thing made on a manji. that band that thing on that band pokemon card exactly her <laughs> arm like when she um, summoned her bow and it was so cool you can still see like the animatic of it it's so cool but they had to you know it, censor it because of the Unfortunately, the thing similarity. on the Pokemon card is actually probably the Japanese kanji ban, which means seal. Yeah. Oh, neat. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like the. For me, I definitely get a very sort of like Indian Hindu goddess sort of thing from mm. the fusions. Um, 
and yeah, not totally. what people read initially. Yeah. Like, I mean, look at Kali, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's fucking super yeah. light. Like, yeah, she's I got do, a I... skirt of arms and a necklace of heads. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Coats. I, I never pr- uh, subscribed to that uh, interpretation either, because I just figured there's no way that this show would, would yeah. deliberately yeah. do that kind of thing. But, you know, uh, sometimes... You know, it's an interpretation to a text, and there was mm. a validity to like the unintentional uh, stuff that was being uh, presented there. Mm. Yeah. I, well, yeah, it's at least worth discussing. But yeah. uh, I think ulti- I think ultimately, it's not as bad as it's not as bad as people were worried. It, it Absolutely was. not. No. Mm. Um. So we wanted to go on to full disclosure. Oh, one more quick thing. <laughs> One more quick thing about Opal is that her outfit also changed because Pearl's outfit changed. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Yep. Like, Ooh. Opal sort of had the, the top that Pearl used to have, but then right. now it's sort of changed, and now she has that cool. waist thing that Pearl has, so... Oh. Um, when the individual gems change, the fusion slightly alters as well. Now I feel like I have to look this up. <laughs> yeah, that's what the, I'm doing the, right the now. Stephen Wiki yeah. has a... Uh, Stephen Wiki, to the wiki, go. Okay, yeah, oh, Paul. Um, yeah, in her Oh, yeah, we box. have a different thing on her profile for current and debut. And yeah, the, you got that for all has, the characters. That's great. So the, the new one has, like, the wrapping around the torso and the, like, more kind of vest style top rather than just, that's really cool. I love that yeah. attention to detail. I know it's it's amazing because so perhaps uh, like it could be that the reason Garnet's design changed was because Sapphire and Ruby's did because they both went back into their gems. We just never got to see what their original designs were. No, I mean that's kind of the thing. Like the gems can like like do they even technically have a base form or do they just sort of like. Pick, pick a standard one for convenience sake. There's this big thing about how when they reform out of gems for a moment, you tend to see like this mannequin-like yes. figure, and then suddenly the hair and stuff all pops out from it. Yeah, like yeah. They, they look like po- those little wooden useless yeah. pose dolls yeah, <laughs> that's that I what, hate. That's another thing that go- we learned about in Jailbreak with Steven, and how he was able to free everybody from their cells because mm. those cells, what they did is they disrupted the gem body projection because as we learned in previous episodes their bodies are constructs that their gem creates yeah and because steven is partly organic that doesn't affect him yeah um so he was it makes you wonder if that's what uh rose's plan was the whole time yeah all according to kai kaku (laughs) (laughs) kai kaku means plan she did say (laughs) when she was talking to steven that like she knew what she was doing and she had an an idea for why she was creating Steven in the first place and that he was going to be the change in human and gem kind and like usher in this new era or whatever. He's going to be the best out of both of them. Yeah. But that also made me wonder like how much of Steven is an artificial construct and how much of him is not. I think it's well I I think well that's the reason like that's the reason, you know, the he the, the, the anti gem form field whatever didn't affect him because like you know he he does have a base form he's he's human basically but yeah yeah but, but it affected like, him a little bit and like yeah. well, we have seen like, him Ugh. change his shape yeah so. well like that that's sort of the thing it's it's like it, it, it's it's like transfer it's like transformation it's not it's not just projection if they turn into something they are that because it's like Rose mm. like Ian Jones Cordy somebody asked. Uh, actually, someone even it, it wasn't someone asking him about it directly, but in his answer of whatever they were asking, he mentioned that Rose Rose Quartz like sh- shape shifted a womb for Stephen to gestate in. So like that was a they, when they transform, like they can make a real they turn they turn into a biological organism, but they can also just decide to not be. Well, it, it's it's weird because yeah. it's like a complete illusion. I think that's a better way to describe it because it's not their real selves and they've yeah. said it a pearl has said it many times the only part of themselves that is real is their gem yeah but it's solid and can behave organically 
but it's like somewhere in between like magic and technology and cause, you know when amethyst mm. gem was cracked she was like you know bugging out like a yeah. broken computer so it's a little fuzzy but hopefully we'll mm. learn more about like the specifics of gem biology and their I'm life sure cycle. it'll be terrifying yeah i'm sure it yes. will be really hard to grasp and then, okay, that's all I had to say about... Full disclosure. Full disclosure. <laughs> um. dun, 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 dun. So, that's our review of full disclosure. <laughs> nice ringtone, Steven. Moving on. No. And also, uh, you know, season two has started, and, you know, they started off with some fluffier stuff, but uh, mm. one thing that's interesting is that I was pleasantly surprised by the Say Uncle episode. Yes. It was not nearly as bad as I was expecting. Like, it was actually entertaining. It was kind of sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised that it was 11, because, like, I I feel like that's, that that was, that was another thing I didn't even realize about the 11 minute time thing. It's like, when they tell a great story, it can seem longer than 11 minutes, but also, also, it's shorter, so it's like, even when it's just fluff, it never feels like this was a waste of your time. It just feels like, okay, this was fun. Yeah. Like, because it was over, and I was like, really? Like, because, like, Garnet literally said, okay, it's time for this episode to be over. And I was like, wait a minute, has it been 11 minutes? Like, shit, it's been like 10. (laughs) Yeah. I I actually enjoyed it enough where I think I'll give Uncle Grandpa a second chance. I don't know if it'll... I don't know if it'll stick, but I'm going to give it another chance. I've only seen one episode, and I liked... One part of it. You so, liked Pizza Steve. No, it wasn't Pizza Steve. It was an interstitial thing with a talking hot dog. It's... Uh. <laughs> Amethyst uh. also liked Pizza Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope that Steven didn't like Pizza Steve. Yeah, yeah Open Book and Joyride were, uh, were... Open Book was very sweet, but, you know, not not mm. anything, not building anything in particular. Although it, it, it did I, it, a bit about kind of relationship between yeah. Commie and Steve. Well, actually, actually, yeah. It's like you need to tell her what you what you didn't want to tell her, and you think it's going to be like, yeah. oh, I like you. It's like, uh oh. it's not even. A, and they even structure the sentence to fake you out. It's, it's yeah. it starts with I liked the ending to the, the seventh book or whatever. Yep, yeah. that yeah. was I really great. That had me going really, until the very end. That was I very really. Messy loved the ending of that because it was like such like a jive at like all of those like internet flame wars where it's like oh you like this well like th- that whole thing where steven Ooh. was like you still like me even though i like that thing you hate and have some serious like problems with because you know connie went in this whole like tumblr rant yeah. about how it was a bad thing and then steven it's was problematic. like problematic it's, it's problematic and yeah. steven was like but i like it but i don't want you to think i'm a bad person like that's kind yeah. of a real thing yeah. in this modern internet age and yeah. it was kind of neat to see something address that yeah it was and, sort of like hey kids yeah. You can disagree on media and still be still be friends. We are telling- also hey twenty year olds. You can disagree <laughs> on media and still be friends. We are saying this now because we're doing this Uncle Grandpa crossover, and I need you all to shut up. <laughs> I need you to just get over yourselves. Like it's and just one didn't. episode, and they didn't. Like you know even. You know, constantly messaging them and being like, "I rub rub one." And Ian was just like, "Everybody, it was like, please!" You, you, somebody messaged Everybody him that worked like, on the show was like, "Calm down." Yeah. Um. Somebody messaged him saying, "Like, you guys shouldn't make this episode." And Ian's like, "We already made it, like yeah, months we ago." Made it months like, ago. this is how little they like people like that know about cartoons. It's like, how how much work do you think this is? I it's know, done. You can't it's do an it. April Fool's Day. Fun, silly episodode. See, like, that's what another it, thing I'm saying. Like people they talk, are like, they, Rah! And it's like it's, it's like just they said to be they fun. said it aired April second, but because because it wasn't on April Fool's Day and there was press about it before April Fools, nobody even. I, I don't think a lot of people even realized it was an April first episode. <laughs> just because like the people only care about April Fool's Day for like the first five hours of April Fool's Day. <laughs> I thought it was just. A, I I didn't even realize. It. I thought it was just like yeah, let's do this goofy non-canon thing because it'll be fun and the kids will like it because that's yeah. who the audience of this show is. But it, it literally said April Fools. Oh and, yes. At the end. When when Steve when uh, Uncle Grandpa shot the cannon that was not canon. 
that is he shot his he shit. shot his head cannon and sunk Sadie and Lars's ship. <laughs> oh my god.